Hi, my name is Jim. I'm a gunsmith. The name of my shop is uh, Gunworks in Harrington, Maine. Today's video, we're going to take a pile of scrap parts and we're going to build a functioning firearm out of it. This is a parts kit that was available from Centerfire Systems. This is a World War II finished machine gun called the KP-44. This gun fired originally 9mm cartridges, fed from a 71 round drum magazine, and it fired from an open bolt and fully automatic only. What you're going to see here in this video is going to be a series of steps that we're going to go through to turn this into a legal to own, semi-automatic, firing only, no automatic. We're going to make this a large handgun. get everything clamped up and welded. Well, once the rear part of this is welded, this legally becomes a receiver. So what you want to do is make sure that you have some serial numbers on this thing somewhere. Now you're not required to if you're building this for yourself. If you're going to build it and somebody talks you out of it later, it better have some serial numbers on it. ATF would be pretty unhappy if it doesn't. Here you see the entire upper end of the gun that's already been welded, the receiver's been put together, and this part's finished. What we've done here is I've made a stop collar to go on this odd-shaped bolt, and we're going to use the dial indicator to go off this, and we have it set to where it's uh, running pretty, pretty true to center. We're down to within a thousandth. This is the setup we're going to use so we can center drill the entire bolt for the firing pin. Okay, you can see in this picture here that I've, uh, we've already got the, the new bolt face drilled and tapped. We've inserted a stainless steel machine screw in there, and this is what we're going to make the new bolt face out of. Here you see the new bolt face has been machined, and we've got the, the center drill part where the firing pin goes. You see here where we started making the firing pin out of 3 16 drill rod. Here we've got a little spring that I just pulled out of the drawer, and this is what we're going to use for our firing pin return spring. And here you see the firing pin's been fitted up, and we have a pretty good looking firing pin protrusion. The next part we're going to do is, you see in the uh, top of the receiver, we have what they call a denial rail. This is to prevent you from being able to put a fully automatic bolt back into the gun in the future. So here we're machining a slot in the top of the bolt for that little rail to ride. You see the full length of that little machined out rail on the top of the original bolt. And here's the entire bolt assembly complete. You'll notice in the rear back here we've got a firing pin extension and I've cross drilled and pinned a firing pin retaining pin in place. And this is the bolt ready to go in the firearm now. Now for the original recoil mechanism, since the firing pin now runs the full length of the bolt instead of the original short fixed firing pin, I had to mill a slot so this will fit over the firing pin. And here you see the entire firing pin installed, the entire bolt assembly is all put together with the recoil spring. Okay, here in this uh, picture you see that the lower receiver modifications have been started. We've got the cutouts for the trigger to go into. We've got the hammer pin and the trigger pin drilled. In the background you see our AK-47 parts US made by TAPCO getting ready to be modified and installed. Here you see all the parts that have already been modified ready for installation. You have the AK-47 TAPCO US made trigger and hammer assembly. The latch, <coughs> modification, the latch modifications have been done. Here's the latch once it's been welded and installed. Next step we're going to do is we're going to go back and we're going to modify AK-47 rails so we'll have uh, bolt rails for the bolt to ride on and for the ejector assembly. Here you see that the rails have been fitted and welded in. 
and we're able to get the drum to feed 9mm hollow points straight out of the drum magazine. Here you see in this picture all the AK-47 parts have been modified, hammer spring, trigger spring, everything's already been installed. And here's the complete gun with a rough finish on it. What I'm going to do is go back later on, sandblast the entire thing, put a nice coat of Duracoat clear, uh, black oxide finish on it. And in this picture here you see the gun opened up. This gun opens up like a clamshell to be cleaned. This gun was assembled in compliance with section 922R Title 18 U.S. Code, which basically states that you can use no more than a maximum of 10 foreign built parts in any semi-automatic firearm that's been uh, reassembled from a parts kit. Oh, it's empty. gun design. When the gun's empty, you gotta clean it. You can open it up for easy access to all the internal parts. Or KP44 semi-automatic. Thank you for watching this latest Gunworks video. Down East Gun Works is a full service farm repair service for all of your long guns and handguns that includes a high tech machine shop for tooling obsolete parts. Old or new, if you have a farm that needs attention, Gun Works can probably fix it, solve it, coat it, and make it work. If you're living in Down East Maine, come by the shop for a visit. We're located on Route 1 in Harrington. If you live elsewhere, you can reach us by going to the website www.downeastgunworks.com or call in the shop at area code 207-483-2175. If you found this video helpful or interesting, please leave me a comment and rate the video. If you subscribe to my YouTube channel, you'll always know when I've posted something new. And thanks again for watching.